Well, good morning, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to our nine o'clock contemporary worship service. Again, we're facing some transitions, and so we ask for your grace and your patience and your feedback. But the most important thing is that we are giving this time to God. A couple of announcements as we move forward. If you have not already connected to the Bishop Summer in the Scriptures study, I highly recommend it. We are reading through all of the Gospels. We're reading a chapter a day following whatever day today is. So today is the 14th. We are reading Matthew chapter 14. Um, the second thing, for our kids and our families, we've got a Vacation Bible School Zoom call this Tuesday. Uh, there are videos present on YouTube. If you haven't checked those out, you don't have to be a kid to look at them. They are fantastic. We've got testimonies. We've got even somebody deployed has been giving instructions and been participating in Vacation Bible School. Uh, we've got testimonies and music. It's really fantastic. It's really great depth for our kids and our families. And then last but not least, as far as announcements, we are shifting, obviously shifting our worship times this morning to a 9 a.m. contemporary and 11 a.m. traditional. But moving forward, our worship team decided that we also need to have space for folks that need to worship in the sanctuary. So as a quick update on our worship plans moving forward, we've got a quick video update for you. As we move forward through this pandemic, online worship is going to continue to be our primary way of gathering. We want you to continue worshiping with us online as much as possible. If you are planning to join us in person for worship, we've made a bunch of changes and so you need to know what to expect as you come to the sanctuary. Number one, we need everybody to wear masks the whole time they're in the building. Your mask protects me. My mask protects you, and so if one person refuses to wear a mask, that puts everybody in danger. And so be prepared that if somebody comes to worship and they're not wearing a mask, everybody's going to have to go home. Number two, we're going to keep maintaining those social distances. That means we've got designated pews for sitting. As folks exit, we're going to exit by row. And even in the parking lot and on the way to the sanctuary, even if you know and love and trust somebody, we're going to have to maintain that six feet apart the whole time. We're also eliminating anything in the worship service that would be shared or passed. We're not going to have hymnals. We're not going to have bulletins. We're not going to pass the plate. Anything that you need will be up on the screen. Um, and then instead of passing plates, we're going to have offering baskets so you can drop your offering in as you come. At this time, we are only planning Sunday morning worship. That means no planned Sunday school as a whole. That means no nursery, no coffee hour, or anything like that. It'll just be gathering in the sanctuary and then heading out. Another major shift in worship is that we're not going to have any live music in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings. Several scientific studies have come out and said that singing is a very high risk activity because uh, you can spread droplets that way. And so we're going to have music on the screen. And if you are in the sanctuary, we're going to encourage you to sing with your heart. But all the music on Sunday morning will be pre recorded. The service will be a little bit shorter so that we can have plenty of time between services, wipe everything down. We are gonna have hand sanitizer available. We'll have disposable masks for folks that need them. We'll have sealed activity bags for kids. Uh, we are gonna have plenty of time for prayer and scripture and time to sit in that sanctuary as designated time offered up to God. Our current plan is to open the sanctuary doors on June 21st, but again, if you feel led to stay home and worship, there is zero guilt in that. It is probably the safest and smartest way to worship at this time. And so some good reasons to stay home and worship from home are if you are feeling any kind of sickness or illness, if you are in that high risk category, if you prefer to sing, uh, if you wanna encourage social distancing and help make sure that we have plenty of space between folks in the sanctuary, or if for some reason you are uncomfortable wearing a mask during that worship time, again, there is no reason that you can't stay home and worship and be part of our worshiping community. So however you gather, whether it's online or in person in the sanctuary, we encourage you to continue to worship God. Give God the praise, give God the glory, and continue to put yourself in a space where the Holy Spirit is working on your heart. 
We look forward to having you join us for worship. Like I said, however that is, whether it's online, you are present with us, or in person, we will be glad to see this much of your face. Um, as we shift and, and step forward in, in worship, we're gonna have a moment to connect as a community. I know I've really been missing other folks, and so when we are here in person, this will be a moment to turn and look around, maybe wave, maybe salute, whatever your way of greeting others is. Um, and if you're home, we're gonna invite you, go ahead and pull out your, your device if you're on Facebook, send a quick message to somebody, a text message, just something that says, hey, I'm thinking about you. Just a way to reconnect and remember that we are not in this alone. We are passing the peace. We're going to have you continue doing that as the praise team leads us in our opening song as we connect with one another and connect with God. faith it takes to climb out of this boat I'm in onto the crashing waves to step out of my comfort zone into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is and he's holding out his hand but the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed the ways they keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. There's a sling and a stone Surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors Shaking in their armor Wishing they'd had, had the chance to stand But the giant's calling out my name And he laughs at me Reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed The giant keeps on telling me time again, boy, you'll never win, you'll never win, but the voice of truth tells me a different story, the voice of truth says do not be afraid, and the voice of truth says this is for my glory.
opening scripture is Psalm 46. As we read, I invite you to join us in saying the words in bold. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, Though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. God utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations God has brought to the earth. God makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. God breaks the bow and shatters the spear. God burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. As we sit with that scripture, we're going to pause for a moment of stillness. If you are at home, worshiping from home, we encourage this to be a time where you are taking some deep breaths and breathing into this verse from this psalm. Um, but for those in the sanctuary, we ask that you would simply be still, sit before God, and be present with God who is present with us. And all of God's people said, Amen. At this time, we're going to have a moment for our kids' message. So if you are fifth grade or younger especially, we invite you to come on close to the screen. Come on down for our children's message. Our question this morning comes from Jake. And Jake asks us a question that almost every adult I know has asked, and that question is, why doesn't God just take away the coronavirus? Well, Jake, I gotta tell you, there's not a good answer. At least for me, there's not an answer that I find perfectly satisfying because in my world, in my bubble, I would love it if God would just sweep in and take away the coronavirus. I would also love it if God would just sweep in and take away all cancer, if God would take away all racism, if God will take away every sin or space of anger in me or in others. I would love it if God would just come in and make everything perfect and make everything right. But I think sometimes in order for God to make everything completely perfect, God has made the choice to allow us as people to have free will. God has allowed us to make our own choices, and sometimes that means we don't make the best choices. And God loves us even when we make mistakes. And so even though the whole world is imperfect, even though there are viruses that spin out of control, even though there are things that are not good, God allows us to be present fully with God. And I got to say, I don't fully understand that. And one day when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God why. But in the meantime, I do know 
that God does not give up on the world. Our whole story about Jesus shows that Jesus came into the world where there were viruses. Jesus came into the world where there is pain and suffering and sickness. And Jesus came in to show us that even with illness and sickness and sin and the ways that we're sometimes mean and harsh to others, even in this world, God is willing to walk with us and be with us. So even though God doesn't just magically take away the, miraculously, take away the virus that is plaguing us, God is still with us through it. And I do believe, and I know it doesn't fully answer it and it doesn't make it all okay, but in the end, God has a vision of the kingdom of God where all is right again. Where one day there won't be any illness or sickness. One day there won't be tears or sadness or grief. There won't be disruptions within our community. We are all going to be fully at peace with one another. There will be justice. The world will be the kingdom of God that God always planned it to be. And so I hope in that and trust that one day that will come. But in the meantime, when things are not as they should be, I do trust that God is with us. And God is calling us to do everything we can to help those who are sick, whether that is a sickness like coronavirus or a sickness like sin or anger or hatred or judgment. God is with us, calling us to be as kind and loving and Christ-like as we can through it. So Jake, thank you for that question. Um, I hope and I pray that God will continue to help us grow and trust even when we don't understand. We're going to close in prayer, and so I invite you to pray with me. If you want to lift your hands and repeat after me, let's pray. Ready? Pray. Dear God, we don't always understand. We know there are hard things and scary things, but you don't leave us alone. We know you are good. We know you are loving. So thank you for loving us. And help us as a world to heal. In Jesus we pray. Amen. At this time, we are going to have a time of offering. In just a moment, the band is going to play. And again, even when we return to in-person worship, we are not going to pass offering plates. We'll have baskets um, on stands as you come into the sanctuary. So you can kind of drop your offering, or you can continue to give online. The missions and ministries continue. We continue to do missions and ministries with our kids. We continue to do stuff online. We're going to continue our Wednesday dinners and continue having a space that says, community, we are here for you. Um, also, as usual at this time, if you have prayer requests you would like us to pray for, please list those and offer those up as a prayer request and part of your offering to God.
let us come to God and join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we stand or sit before you knowing that you are God, knowing that we don't have all of the answers, knowing that we are weary, knowing that we need you. And so for each person who comes this morning with heavy hearts, we ask for you to come alongside, remind us who you are, and lift us up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, this morning we pray for those who have been specifically named before you. We lift up Kevin and pray for continued recovery for him and grace for Tammy and his family. Lord, we pray for Roxanne. Ask that you would carry her through this season of grief and difficulty and healing. Lord, we pray for our neighbors. Lord, we especially pray for Nicole. Lord, we pray for John. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up a special prayer for those who are facing cancer, for those who are going through chemo, for those who have received difficult diagnoses, or those who are still in that season of waiting. Lord, we especially lift Nancy to you and her family. Lord, we lift others who we know that are named before you in our hearts. Lord, we know that cancer will not have the final word. We know that cancer cannot touch the heart or the soul. We ask that you would continue to give strength and grace and wisdom for the doctors who surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are facing COVID-19. We pray for the doctors and nurses that surround them. We pray for leaders facing difficult decisions moving forward. Lord, we pray as a community that you would help keep us in line. Lord, that we would do what we can to care for our neighbor and try to keep each other safe through this. And Lord, for moments when folks are facing the illness, Lord, give your strength and courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up to you those who are in nursing homes. We especially pray for nursing homes who have swept through with COVID-19. We pray for those who are sitting in nursing homes and unable to touch or hug or connect with their family. We thank you, Lord, for windows that allow us to see one another and also proclaim that it's not enough. So we also pray for families who have loved ones in nursing homes. We pray for creative connections, and we pray for your spirit that surpasses all understanding. Lord, may your Holy Spirit surpass all loneliness and separation too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you, Lord, those who are in military, posi military positions. Lord, again, those in the military who make difficult decisions. We pray for those who are currently deployed, and we pray for families facing deployment. We especially lift to you this morning, Kimberly and Mark and Louise. May you be with the Julia family as they transition and pray and move forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue as a country to grieve the death of George Floyd. Again, Lord, we mourn a world where somebody is killed, and we mourn the systems that failed him, and we mourn the ways that we as a country have been particularly battered with racism. Lord, may you show us the way forward. May you allow us to put feet to our prayers and thoughts. May you convict us of spaces in our own hearts where we are failing to love our neighbor. We pray as a country that you would bring healing, bring justice, bring peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray these prayers and others that sit on our hearts. We pray for those who will come and worship. We pray for those who are worshiping now. Lord, we pray and ask for your courage to face transitions, for your grace and love as we feel inconvenienced. We pray for your spirit of love to separate and pass over even the separations that we're feeling. Lord, our spirits grieve the loss of normalcy 
And also, Lord, we praise you for the ways you have been present. We praise you for texts and messages from friends. We praise you for the rain that has fallen. We praise you for Florida thunderstorms. We praise you for neighbors and friends. We praise you for toilet paper restocking in grocery stores. Lord, we praise you for the ways that you are working in our lives. May we be mindful that you are with us. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ echoing your words, gathering our voices, and praying together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Again, I have been reading along with the Bishop's Summer in the Scriptures study. And since today is the 14th, I thought today we would read a scripture story from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter. I invite you to lift your hearts before God. Um, if you brought your Bible with you from home, go ahead and open that up. If you are home and have a Bible near you, go ahead and open that up. Otherwise, it's on the screen. Hear now the word of the Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart! It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So when I first read this passage, I zeroed in and I got really stuck on that image in verse 25, or sorry, verse 24, when it says the disciples were in the boat, battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. Now the actual Greek word here is, is pretty violent. When it, says, when it says the waves battered the boat, and the wind was against them, like the actual word here is, is like very antagonistic. Like the boat was beaten down and tortured. Like it's actually a similar word to tortured. And the waves against them, the wind against them, um, was, this, it was the same word we would use if adversaries or Facebook trolls are completely attacking you around every corner. And there, especially in this season of 2020, I know there have been tons of memes on Facebook that have just showed like all of the things that have happened. And so for 2020 at least, I feel like we are in the season of wave after wave after wave. If it's not one thing, it's another. Uh, I know I saw one meme that said we've gone, you know, we've got the pandemic, we've had all of these other things, uh, and great, now in Florida, we are right about ready for hurricane season. And then beyond hurricane season, you know, this is an election year, and we all know how wonderfully uniting election seasons are for us as a country. And by that I mean they're not. 
Uh, and, and by that, I also mean like this is a season, especially since we've been socially distant, we've been that much more present online and on Facebook. And I gotta tell you, I love Facebook and connecting with people, but Facebook is not real relationships, y'all. In fact, if anything, Facebook gives us the illusion of a real relationship. It gives us the illusion of thinking we really know and see people, but it also gives us enough distance that we can safely spout our anger in ways that don't allow us to really see how it impacts others. And so Facebook itself, to me, is this constant image of waves crashing and things against each other. And so in some ways, in the midst of social distancing, we're missing those real deep connections, but we're embarrassed with these continued uh, various opinions that are almost always like shouting. So no wonder here in this scene, the disciples are in the boat, battered by the waves, and they feel like the wind is against them. Now maybe for you, that wind against you is a season where you're continuing to grieve a loved one. Maybe for you, it's a new diagnosis. Maybe for you, that wind against you is just the depression of this season, making it hard to get up out of bed and go like normal. Maybe for you, it's just the newness of having to do your job differently again and again. Um, but I do feel like in this season, here's where we are. We are in the boat. We're not, we are, we are in the boat. And also it's hard in, t in times like this, it's hard to see where Jesus is. Part of the grief of this particular passage is that Jesus is not in the boat there with the disciples. A couple chapters earlier, Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and there was a storm and Jesus woke up and he stilled the storm and he made it end. And so I could easily see the disciples in this story. They're like, where is Jesus in the midst of this difficult weather? Why won't Jesus just make it still? Why won't Jesus just make it go away? But in the midst of the polarizing wind versus boat, wave versus boat, disciples versus the elements, like in the midst, of, we have this situation. But also really this story is about Jesus. And so when we pause, like we could get angry and say, Jesus, where are you in the midst of this? Or we could look and actually see where Jesus is. And the reason Jesus isn't in the boat is because at the beginning of this chapter, John the Baptist, Jesus' own cousin, has died. And Jesus is taking some time to take care of his own heart and soul. Jesus is taking the time to be on the mountain to pray and connect with God. In fact, he went away to the mountain to be by himself to pray and recharge, and thousands of people gathered around Jesus, and I can deeply relate to that moment when you're like, I'm just tired, and then there's people that just need and want something else, and that knee-jerk reaction is to be like, ugh, go away, but Jesus, in that moment, says, no, let's feed them, let's love them, let's be compassionate, and also... Jesus, after he sends them away, he sends the disciples ahead on the boat, Jesus takes a moment to center and pray. And y'all, I need that moment when I'm in the boat and I'm feeling the tensions and I'm feeling the waves and I'm feeling the wind and I'm feeling the opposition. I need that image of Jesus kneeling and praying on the mountain. I need that image and reminder that even though this is the fight, Jesus gives us this third option, this other way of saying, you can also pause and pray and center and find strength. And then, after praying, Jesus could have done many things. Jesus could have walked around the lake. Jesus could have, uh, he probably could have stilled the storm. Jesus could have, I mean, again, it's Jesus, it's miraculous. Like, Jesus could have probably teleported to the other side of the water, or, or Jesus could have dried up the entire water so that the disciples were fully safe. In the, I mean, there are lots of things Jesus could have done. But again, in this polarizing boat versus wave, in the midst of batter on batter on batter, Jesus makes the decision to step into it. Our desire from the most time when we are uncomfortable is always to say, Jesus, make it go away. But in this situation, Jesus steps in. 
And the disciples in the midst, again, they are so focused on the fight that at first they don't even recognize that it's Jesus. Their first reaction is to be afraid of the very God who loves them and cares for them because they're not expecting it. And Jesus' response is not only to be present with us through the storm, not only to step into it and show us that maybe it's not just about the fight, maybe there is a third way that we can still be present and love others, maybe we can have moments of peace when we're feeling battered down. Jesus gives us this option of being present and stepping above, and then he reaches out. He says, do not be afraid. And he gives Peter that same option. He says, come on, step out. Step out in faith, follow me. It's not the first time he's done it. And so too, here and now, as we continue to face waves, as we continue to face challenges, as we continue to face a future that is ahead, our call in the midst of it is to remember who we are as people of Christ. It's for us to maintain our identity as Christians first, as people who are willing to step into the chaos, not to be blown about by it, but as people who are carrying the love of Christ with us. Because God is the wave walker. God is the one who sees and does still the storm eventually. And we trust in that and hope in that. But in the meantime, we've got to have the courage to maybe step aside from just picking one verse, boat versus wave and maybe see that Jesus has a vision of loving others that doesn't cause us to fight back and have harsh angst against others. Maybe. Maybe Jesus is calling us to have the courage to do things we didn't think were possible. May it be so. May the God who gives hope be with us. May the God who is with us in the storm remind us indeed that we are not alone. We're going to join our voices again in a affirmation of faith. Um, there is something beautiful about claiming who we are, claiming our collective faith as a community. And so I invite you to join with me in this affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Indeed, thanks be to God. May that God of grace and justice and love and peace give you the courage to take time to connect with the Creator. May God give you the courage to step out onto difficult waters and in moments when you feel battered down. May the grace of God be with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.